Here is my review of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon is an RPG that uses the same turn-based battle system as its predecessors. The core battle mechanics remain the same, but are made more interesting with new moves, items, abilities, and of course new Pokemon. The game introduces about 80 new Pokemon. Some motifs are repeated from past games, such as the early game Rodent. And I personally found the starters a bit underwhelming. But overall, this is a solid roster with lots of interesting Pokemon. Sun and Moon also adds nearly 20 new Alolan forms slash regional variants, which are new versions of Generation 1 Pokemon that are changed up a bit. It's a cool concept that fits in well with the world, makes sense for an anniversary title, and something that I wouldn't mind seeing more of in future games, especially since Sun and Moon only has regional variants on Gen 1 Pokemon. Additionally, much like Black 2, White 2, and X and Y, the region includes a large amount of Pokemon from older games uh, during the main story, which allows for a wide variety of choices among what Pokemon you want in your team. Sun and Moon replaces the tried and true 8 gym system with the Island Challenge. This includes Trials, which are essentially simple tasks slash puzzles, along with battling three wild Pokemon and concluding with a battle against a stronger totem Pokemon. Additionally, there is a strong trainer called a Kahuna for each of the four islands. Unfortunately, I think the trials are one of the weak points of the game, and they just aren't as fun as gyms. There was certainly some level of creativity, charm, and even some... Cinematic moments, but overall, the trials are just too shallow. One of the trials was just a quiz on Pokemon Info, something that's been used as a part of more than one Pokemon Gym puzzle, and another involved simply surfing for a short distance. They, they just aren't that interesting or compelling, and I think that really undermines the game. Z-Moves are a new addition to the franchise that are essentially the common, the common RPG super move, but their power is tied to a regular move the Pokemon already has, so they stay nearly balanced despite being introduced early in the game. That being said, one of the limitations put into place to balance them was making it so that only one Z-Move can be used per game, uh, per battle I should say. And a good percent of trainers for much of the game only have one or two Pokemon. Especially now with a lack of gym leaders and gym trainers. So, these moves are still a bit more OP than they should be. And can become a bit tiresome to even bother using, which I don't think is good for a super move. As far as the post-game content goes... Um, after you beat the main story, you have a bit more of the fire final island to explore with some stronger Pokemon and trainers, an Ultra Beast side quest, which could have been more interesting if we actually saw the effect these Ultra Beasts were having on the area, but is still overall solid, catching some other legendaries, a battle against Red or Blue, and the Battle Tree which is sort of like the Battle Tower, but slightly more exciting with the promise of encountering notable trainers from past games. Overall, a pretty good post-game, but it could have benefited, benefited from an entirely post-game island, with a lot more high-level Pokemon and trainers to battle, and a full-fledged full Battle Frontier, and more uh, post-game side quests. It's, a, you know, it's another good post game but really I think there's a lot of um, missed potential in this series for post games and they could have done a lot more in terms of battle modes single and double battles of course remain triple and rotation battles were removed clearly for technical issues which isn't as big a deal as they weren't used much anyway but it still is less of an option Battle Royales are added, which frankly is a more interesting new twist on battles. Poke Pelago. I'm not going to go into depth on this, but to sum up, it's a convenient feature that can make things such as EV training, growing berries, finding extra items, leveling up, and hatching eggs 
easier and more convenient, especially for pe people that are busy. Well, I didn't hate um, Poker Ride is the next topic. Well, I didn't hate HMs. They could be annoying at times and are now replaced by the convenient and easy system where you summon specific Pokemon to help you progress in the overworld and get items. Story and characters. Um, the overall plot of Sun and Moon is pretty good. Following the player's journey through this region while they encounter various characters, uh, there's some mystery, and it centers on a theme of family as well as just the culture of the region. Its plot is simultaneously grand scale and very personal, which I think works very well for Pokemon. Well, not perfect, this is one of the game's strengths. All of the characters in the game are the, at the very least likable and have decently memorable personalities, certainly more memorable than X and Y. Lily is probably the mo uh, the best and most compelling friend slash rival character the series has ever put forth, and Gladion is up there as well. Likewise, Lusamine is easily one of the best villains, um, re reserved and terrifying, um, with a backstory, uh, or not necessarily backstory, but uh, just a story that I feel is well written. How is fine and likable enough, and works as somewhat of a foil for Gladion, but feels a bit too bland at times. Guzma is a good villain, and Team Skull is certainly humorous, and more fittingly so than Flair, but ultimately feels underutilized near the end of the story. Plot progression. Now while, now while I do praise the story itself, the game unfortunately forces the player to just go to certain areas too much, and it feels too linear. Not as bad as black and white, where you know they just were a bit lazy and just made the region a straight line, but it is too linear. And some of the reasons for restricting access to other areas comes off as forced. I think the solution would have been to just have some of the conversations that give characterization and info just be done over the video chat rather than prodding the player into a certain area. And you know, just let the player make their own path more. If they go into an area where it's like, oh, there's higher level Pokemon here, you know, they'll either uh, just battle the higher level Pokemon or they'll get forced back because it's too strong for them or you can have it where you have to do the trials in a certain order but let them get to the other trials and be like oh I have to do the other one uh, rather than just having like a stupid reason why you can't access part of the island for some reason now the region as a whole I do think well restricted at times, it's a great region. It really feels more alive than any past region. While I would say that X and Y feels like a 2D region uh, transferred into 3D for the most part, Sun and Moon takes full advantage of the technology. And it really feels like with the different elevations and just the way it's designed that this is um, a real place and it's lived in and it has... Um, just a nice environment and vibe all of the four islands have and the different uh, sort of regions of each island have different personality to them uh, it's really nice in terms of the technical stuff uh, this is the best visuals of the series so far not a huge leap from Oris and X and Y but still great looking also trainers now appear with their Pokemon during battle which is a nice touch Music. It's another really good soundtrack with a nice tropical feel mixed in. Perhaps not as epic or memorable as the best of Pokemon soundtracks, but it is still really good. Uh, there are some technical issues, though. The game can experience some slowdown during double battles. This isn't game-breaking by any means. You know, the game is turn-based, so slowing it down doesn't hurt it as much as uh, a non-turn-based game would be, but it can get pretty distracting. Now the menus are more convenient than ever, which is a nice thing for a game like this that plays upward of 60 hours, especially like the PC and everything. 
uh, it's just a very streamlined and very convenient legacy. This is also the 20th anniversary title, and while it does highlight the first gen the most, the entire franchise is shown love in the form of returning Pokemon, ride Pokemon, references, and returning characters. Now there are some minor things that I sort of want to touch upon. Um, the online, I do feel like, has become, in some ways, a bit more convenient, in some ways, a bit less. Though that may just be me getting used to it, I do kind of prefer the uh, PSS system we had in X and Y and Oris. Um, there are what I would call little side missions uh, in various areas, which are nice touches, where they'll be like, oh find my five stuffle and I'll give you something or stuff like that and also like trainers that will only battle you if you defeat every other trainer on the route which I think are nice touches and they just give you you know makes the region again feel more alive and gives the player uh, more to do and different mini goals um, okay I guess I've dragged on long enough to conclude, overall Pokemon Sun and Moon is another great addition to the Pokemon main series, and one that celebrates its legacy. It has the addicting gameplay Pokemon is known for, as well as a good look, great story and characters, great region, and tons of cool Pokemon. While I wouldn't go so far as to say it's the best Pokemon game, mostly because of the trials and how linear it feels, that's no insult given the high quality of the series. If you like the series, or have any interest in jumping in, I highly recommend you pick up Pokemon Sun or Moon.